Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. And I promise I won't be boring, although I don't have a PowerPoint. Uh, yeah. So my name is Kennedy Odede from Kenya. I just want to talk about the journey. You know, uh, right now I'm running a, an organization in Kenya, but I never planned of doing that. So at a very, at a, I grew up in a, in a very poor family. At a very early age, I was a homeless kid. I ran away from the house. I became a street, uh, I started eating from the garbage. I saw no future. But there was something in me that was disturbing my soul. I didn't like the way things were. I was not happy to see suffering. I you know I grew up very close to my mother. She's still alive, and I didn't like seeing her being abused, you know, being suffering. You know I mean? But I didn't know what to do. But I remember one day in the house, we were having a small meal. It was not enough, but the neighbor's kids were around. And I said, Mom, let me kick these kids out. Because, you know, we don't have enough food all the time, and I don't, I don't know what they're doing here. My mother was like, Kennedy, you don't have to do that. And you don't have to be rich or poor to have an impact in someone's life. And for me, that was a, that was a turning point to know that you don't have to be rich or you don't have to be poor, that everybody can do something. So something happened to my life. At the age of 15, I was searching. Grew up in a society whereby you are told that you are poor, that's your life. A country of a class. There's a big gap between the rich and the poor. Whereby you coming from a slum, you feel you're not part of the society. You feel you're an object. <laughs> you feel you're invisible. So I was a very angry man, very sad. But one day I was given a book of autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr. And that book changed my life. I saw the hope and I saw the opportunity. But I didn't know that I would be a social entrepreneur, I swear, I didn't know that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and what I learned from this is that sometimes we have to be ready to say yes in our life, in our struggle. And then what happened to me, after seeing what was happening in the society, seeing my friends being killed by the police, some of them committing suicide, you see there is no future. And that's what turned you to be a bad man. What turned you to be a bad person. And I came to realize that there is nobody bad. There is no bad person. It's all about the environment. It's all about what you're passing through. So in my community, men have been raised to tend to know that they're powerful. <laughs> They've been raised to know that they're the head of the house. <laughs> and then this man, who has been raised like that, you ended up living in a slum, whereby you can't provide. You want to show you're a man. You become hopeless. You see no future. Then what happened next? You become violent. You lost focus. You become rapist. You become abusive. And that's what happens in the society. And that's the place I kind of like grow up into. You know? But what happened for me, I saw the opportunity to change things. I was not happy to see what was happening around me. At 16, I got my first job in the factory. I was earning $1 for, for, 10, for 10 hours. But I, I really believe in the idea of searching, the idea of reflecting. So I asked myself, what is the future? And I remember every time I was waking up very early in the morning to go to the job, you know the idea of 
sometimes poverty can be in your gene. And I used to question this thing. Poverty can be in your blood. How comes my great grandfather was poor? <laughs> my grandfather is poor. My mother is poor. My neighbors are poor. What is going on? Nobody makes it in the society. I look around, who have made it? Nobody. And I was crying every time I'm going to the factory, asking myself, for how long will I do this job? For how long will I come out of from hands to mouth? Whereby you can't afford to go to the hospital. <laughs> you can't afford to help your family. For how long? So that was the question. So what happened one day is an idea started from a soccer ball. I didn't know what I was doing. And I come back in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the slum. And I call my friends. And I say, guys, you know what? Enough is enough. We are not educated, we have no hope, but we can see hope. We are born here, this is our home. We can't live like this. And the most powerful thing, you know, that I was not happy the way my mother was being treated. I was not happy the way my sisters were being treated. And it's bothered me. And this issue of women issues for me is about social justice. You know what I mean? It's about, this is not fair. And my mom and I were very close. So, but one thing in common that I loved in our group of meetings, meeting these young people, is that everybody loves their mom. <laughs> I was like, wow, everybody loves their mom. But if you talk about, can women do A, B, C, D? People say what in the community? That's American ideology, no. Interesting, so there is women, <laughs> And there's our sisters and there's our moms. But it's the same thing. <laughs> so, so what happened? So I used that. Remember I called our first meeting and I said, guys, you know what? We can't allow this thing to happen. Our moms cannot be beaten, cannot be treated like this. Our sisters cannot be raped all the time. We have to stop this. So we started a soccer club. We meet and discuss issues about our moms and sisters. <laughs> it was very, very powerful. We start doing theatre. We go out on the street and we talk about performing art. So we call it ambush theatre. Talk about what is happening in the society. You know what I mean? And believe it or not, slowly by slowly, we are turning into social entrepreneurs without knowing. You know? <laughs> I know? And it became something very huge. But I knew also what's the power of education. That education is very important. And if you if, if, if if educate a woman, if you educate people in society, the world become a better place. But guess what? We didn't have money. I only had 20 cents that I bought the soccer ball with. But the miracles happened, to make the story short. I ended up getting lucky to get a scholarship. I went to Wesleyan, Connecticut. There's Wesleyan here in the room. And it was, for me, it was moving to see a different world. And what I really enjoyed most by then was my shower. I took two hour shower. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And they were playing for me. I was, I was singing Bomale music in the shower room, you know? And I took two hours. People were like, what? this guy is crazy. What is going on with this man, you know? <laughs> but that's my joy. That was the joy, you know what I mean? And honestly, right now, to make the story short, I realized that I was privileged. I think it's very, very important to accept that you are privileged, if you are privileged. Don't deny it. What do you use it for? In my community, we had nothing. We started with a soccer ball. Yeah? So everybody can do something. <laughs> but if you are privileged, you can even do more. <laughs> you know? So what happened there, I was now able to rally my community at, at Wesleyan. And we went back, and I realized one thing is to build a school for our women, to build a school for girls. Now we're talking about innovation, okay? <laughs> Men were not happy with the idea. But the fact is that there were more boys in schools than the girls. But when the idea of the school was being started, everybody, they were like, no. Kennedy, we don't allow a school for women in this community, you know? And then I have to go and think back. That's when you become innovative. Innovation comes when 
you hit the wall, then you bounce back. How can you achieve it, no matter what? So we uh, came with an idea. We're gonna have a school for women in my community, but this school will be linked to social services. And these social services will also provide to the men. For example, health clinic, library, clean water. Believe me or not, men were so happy and they said, Kennedy, bring the school. <laughs> that all became more, that's how I remember being more innovative. That's how, that's how it started, you know. And right now, I promise you guys, it's amazing to see men in my community during election coming with machete to sleep outside to protect the school. You know what I mean? And that tells me something that I want to show you quickly. There's nobody's bad. Circumstances, way of life, make us bad. And everybody want the best for their children, for their family. We can blame people sometimes, but they only believe that men will go get a job in the factory. But if you can show them this education that your daughter will also have a better life, everybody wants the best for their children. And that's how it became the school started. And right now, we're also being innovative by having a barcode card. <clears throat> because I got in my education, we went back in the community, and everybody has a card with their ID that we're able to measure the impact. But I was not born a social entrepreneur, I swear. No. But I think we have to be ready to say yes. It's all about saying yes. Are you ready? Ask yourself, are you ready for the new path? Are you ready to shake the status quo? I mean, and right now we are serving over 70,000 people in Kibera. You know? <laughs> Another thing we have to forget is that I could have done this thing alone. We give a lot of emphasis on the entrepreneurs, you know? <laughs> I'm very, very, very bad in details. That's why I don't have a PowerPoint. <laughs> True, okay. But I have men and women who are very, very smarter than me who are able to help this shining of the community to grow. So as long as we believe in social entrepreneurs, we also have to believe that some people make things work. If you ask me details, I get scared. And that's why I took risk. And my friend, for example, George, was like, Kennedy, how will you get money? I'm like, George, stop. No, don't worry about money. We're going to change the community. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's about that. So when people, social entrepreneurs cannot do it alone, we need what's called a teamwork. And I think because of a team, we're able to have a bigger impact. And right now, our work is growing. But the question is always to ask ourselves to think deeper that we can have an impact. We can all have an impact. We can change life. When you look around and things are not good, that's the time to act. That's the time to change courage, to take courage. I never knew I'll be able to graduate from a liberal art college. But what I knew, I was not happy with what was happening in my community. And I wa we wanted to change it. So everything else for me has been a bonus. I hope you are inspired. Thank you so much.